the best of luck. Hello. So, does that probably happens to you every day, right? Can I have your every autograph? Every day, every day. It's, yeah, yeah, a yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's I, a tough I, thing, but I can understand it though. Yeah. But um, that's not the topic now. We're gonna get into uh, the topic of, as you can see here, empowering industry to design and produce sustainable products using the digital enterprise. And the digital enterprise, once again, is on perfect display here. We basically have. A, a complete factory on display here, don't we? We do, we do, we do. We had some customers this morning and they said, this is exactly what we need. It's factories and factories. We understand this. Can we be part of this next year? So it's been a great morning so far. And also I must say, the first presentation, there's no people here. So I'm really, really happy to see you all. Exactly. But, yeah. But and, that's, and that's exactly what this exhibition is all about. Finally yeah. meeting the people, looking into the faces, seeing some, getting some reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love that. So uh, we're going to start it off with the film, I think. We are. We're going to start off with a movie, so fasten your seatbelts because it's going to get loud. And don't be afraid of dancing. I rather actually would like the new dance, but uh, do you get down? We'll speak later. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Bagasero. We put something in place that no one has ever done before. Cool, eh? And try dancing to that, you gotta be moving really swiftly. The question is, but how? How do you meet those challenges? And it's rather simple. You gotta embrace digitalization by becoming a digital enterprise. And uh, let me show you what I mean by that essentially need to combine the real world with the digital world and capture the life cycle of the product, design, realize, optimize, and the same also for the production. Every so often those two are kind of separated from each other. It makes sense in some cases, but if you put them together, that brings a lot of value because that gives you access to information and at the end of the day, if you're going to make a good decision, you need to base it on some input, information, and that is data. Um, important to understand, this also includes buildings, because building also has a huge potential of optimization. Uh, data, keyword. Uh, why is that? Well, everything today is more or less connected with everything, as you know, and you meet in order to, why do you want to use this? Because you want to meet the constantly changing requirements of your customers, and that you can do by collecting data, understanding the data, and use the data. And this is something we show first side in, um, in the satellite down there, sustainability and profitability, sustainability uh, satellite. And um, yeah, it's a lot more to it, but I'd like to dive into a practical example. Some of you have already seen it, I hope. Uh, the Simrod, it's a really, really cool thing. Um, it's an all-electrical vehicle um, that you can drive around, and we're using it in this presentation as a technology carrier. It is a representative of any given product and production, showing what we are capable of doing with digitalization and automation. Um, in my story, it's all about improving the range of this car, and to do so, we need to adjust every screw in this Simrod vehicle. And for that, we're using the digital twin, or the digital twin for the product, if you like. And uh, when we do that, it's uh, perhaps you first think that it's all about the mechanical components, but it's not. I'm going to come back to that later. It's about the electronics and the electric, electrical system. It's everything in there. But thanks to simulation, we can pinpoint areas where we can optimize, in this case, this Simrod car. Um, for example, the chassis. How is it working? Is it stable enough? We simulate it and we find out when the car is driving around. Um, we can also check the aerodynamics. If you look at this movie, on the car 
To the left, in this case, you have a windshield. The car to the right doesn't. And you see the pressure on the chest of the, the passenger and the driver. The people on the right will have a very cold forehead, but there are helmets and hats, so you can protect that. But this is how you simulate and optimize. So this little change will improve the performance of the car. In the car itself, we have a battery. And we have some restrictions in regards to, to area. How much can we put in there? Also here, simulation comes into play. Optimize the battery pack to get as much power as possible in there. So Digital Twin uh, is a replica of the real product. But how do we make sure it is a replica? Well, for that, we need to calibrate the product. And in this little video, I think this gentleman here may be driving the car, actually, on a very cold, snowy day in Belgium, Leuven. And now we're collecting information in the suspension area. How are they behaving driving on this cobblestone road? Can you take it? We collect that data. We understand that data, and we want to use that data in the simulation. Here you go, suspension to the left. Uh, we look at it, and we up there. We find that part, really, really cool part. This is what it looks like, a written thing. And we figured, can we optimize this? And we said, yes, we can. So we took a 3D scanning device, uh, made a 3D model of it, put it into our NX solution, and use something we call the topology optimization and generative design. Simply explained, it is a technology that is mimicking nature's way of building trees and bone structure, very organic approach. And uh, by doing so, we were able to reduce the weight with 30%. Less weight, more range. However, this part is new. We want to make sure that we do not fiddle around with stability or safety with this car. So we take this new car part and put it in the simulation again and see how it behaves in this area. So you have the color coding kind of reporting the stress on the part. And as we can see, we're good to go. So if you're going to produce this part, uh, you need to have a strategy. And that is something we develop with the digital twin of the production. If you've ever been in front of a milling machine and want to mill something like that, you're in for a challenge. But if you use additive manufacturing, you can print it. And when we say, if you can dream it, you can make it, right, Brenda? This is what we mean. So we can print more or less any type of product. In this case, the selective laser melting is the methodology. However, when it's done with the printing, we need to post-product it. So we need to cut off the parts we do not need. We need to cut the thread, et cetera. It's essentially a traditional CAD, CAM, CNC process chain. So we cut the thread. We remove the material we do not need. And by that, we are kind of done with the part manufacturing. Next step is someone needs to mount it on the car. What do we do? We take it to the virtual factory, obviously. Simulating the process, uh, more or less the entire production, you know, the flow of material. Uh, you can try thousands of what-if scenarios to get the best out of your factory, thanks to simulation. Even the manual work, using, in this case, Jack is his name. It is actually Jack. And uh, we can see how much power and force is working on his body. Will he have a risk of getting work-related injuries as he's standing there? Do we adjust the table? And what do we do? When do we have a break? Everything can be simulated to make sure it is as good as possible for the person doing the job. Next step for the machine builders, getting access to the digital twin of the production, in this case, the line, enables a quick, perhaps even better the sign of the machines required. A machine usually interacts with conveyor belts, etc. With the digital twin, you have exactly all of that. Add to that virtual commissioning, using the real PLC code with a virtual controller to make sure that this machine works as planned when you install it for real. So <clears throat> now we're kind of done with the, the virtual vehicle and the virtual production. And I'm going to come back to what I said in the beginning about the electronics, the chip. Very important to improve range also in cars nowadays. With our software solutions, we can design and simulate a virtual chip that we put on a virtual PCB, printed circuit board, and check the signals. Where are they going? How are they interacting with the components around it? And, and this is important, people, because if we're looking at autonomous driving going forward, to certify a car for autonomous driving, it's kind of the distance you need to drive is from Hanover to the moon and back. 
Currently, there's no road available, but it's essentially millions and millions of kilometers. With simulation, you have a chip on a virtual PCB in a virtual car that you drive around in a virtual city, checking those different scenarios. That obviously speeds up the process immensely. So we take it all the way from chip to city, with a virtual chip on a virtual vehicle, built in a virtual factory, driven in a virtual city. I think this is really cool, I must say. <laughs> so now we're done with the development of the product and the planning of the production. So now we go into the real production. So we have everything that we need. First of all, we go to the SLM, Selective Laser Milling Machine, which also stands over there. Truth is, though, that the real SLM machine is big as a one-family villa. I kid you not. We had to scale it down a bit, but the technology is all there. So you print this part, and this is obviously flexibility. And another way to improve flexibility is to work with AGVs, automated guided vehicles, that brings the material to the station is needed at the very right moment in time. That speeds up things. And you, weren't at, you wouldn't be at Siemens if we didn't talk about automation. I'm sure you've heard about the totally integrated automation portal. That is also something that drives flexibility in production. Every component in automation that you need, from a sensor, controllers, security system, it's all available, and you can find more information in the satellites here at the booth. Another thing uh, to improve flexibility is communication. 5G is a very big driver and accelerator in this, not only for the horizontal uh, acceleration of the information, also for the vertical uh, integration or the convergence of the IT and OT or top floor to shop floor. And it looks like this. So we got this little tower, IT, OT, IT, OT convergence. And working with this type of architecture, making sure data flows between all stakeholders involved in the development of the product, that increases transparency. And transparency is good if you want to make the right decision, data-based decisions. And uh, here we see another example. Now you can actually get access to that data. And I'm going to repeat myself. We need to collect the data. We want to understand the data. And we want to use the data. And this is exactly what we do here. And uh, if we just take a look at this, Kent Vitanen, um, CEO for SKF, president for the bearing operations, big Swedish uh, bearing company. They're using exactly this to actually pimp up a brownfield plant uh, to the west of uh, Turin, Araska. And this helped them to increase transparency and by that also improve the utilization of their machines. And that obviously is very profitable. Uh, also here, if you want to measure, if you want to improve something, it is very important that you first document and you, uh, and you must measure it, otherwise it's difficult to improve it. Very simple. Our solutions here also, and this is the energy manager, you can go in and look at areas where more, the, the most amount of electricity is consumed and dive in there and optimize that. And also here on the booth, we have proof points showing that we can reduce the electricity, electricity consumption with 14% and gas consumption with 40%. In this day and age, needless to say, this adds value to the whole thing. And also the carbon footprint, the CO2. Um, also here, a lot of work going on not only within your own company, but also outside the supply chains, being able to track and manage the material, the CO2 footprint, that also drives sustainability. I have not me two minutes to go, and I'm going to speed up a bit because there's a lot of cool things coming here, so I'm going to figure out a way to get this in gold fastly. So now we have, have you seen the story, going from a product, optimizing it now, it's kind of produced with the new components driving. And, but it doesn't stop here. Also, at this point in time, we're collecting data because it comes down to continuously optimizing everything we do, be doing more with less in a continuous loop of optimization. And this is also actually from Belgium. Now it's springtime or summer, and I guess you were also driving the car. Yes, you are. Very good. And that is also kind of a happy ending on this uh, story, I would say. Um, you have learned how to make product and production better, yes, and to become more sustainable and by doing more with less. Uh, and this is our digital enterprise approach. And to navigate all those things, we have a concept called digital threads, which is kind of a user journey stopping into different business processes, guiding people 
to do as much as possible, as efficient as possible. And now someone might, may, may, be, may be thinking, <coughs> a lot of data going back and forth here. How do I protect my intellectual property? Well, don't you worry. We have a cybersecurity system on a uh, zero trust principle. So your data is definitely protected in this area. Um, Steve was coming here. Yes. Ecosystems, working in an ecosystem is definitely important for all of us. Uh, perhaps all companies should team up, make sure that they collaborate with perhaps even competitors to exchange the data and get more competitive and also more sustainable. Because the world is such that there are more than one digital enterprise that need to interact with each other. So if you can dream it, you can essentially make it. And by that, I cordially would like to invite you to meet the fantastic team of colleagues I have in my booth. I see some of them over there. Ask them questions, talk to them, challenge them, because they are, we've been waiting two years to meet all of you. And I'm sure you will find the right answers. And that's the booth. And I also have another little card up my sleeve. I know you two know MacGyver, right? Yeah, so we have also MacGyver troop here in the middle of the screen, the digital enterprise services people. They take you on a journey from consulting through implementation all the way to optimization. Raman over here would be a perfect person to talk to in this case. So with that, Chris, if you can dream it, you can make it. Thank Let's you very give much. Mr. Magnus Elman a big round of applause here. Speaking of dreams. Yeah. You bet you've dreamt of this for the past three I years. I have. Huh? I have. Finally, finally, finally once again, over again, to have that audience. And I once again, uh, it, it's been a fantastic presentation. Um, feel free to speak to Magnus and his team, like he just said. Um, and uh, we'll see you again later today or tomorrow. When's your next presentation? I don't, see, I don't know. Really. I don't know. I think tomorrow. We'll just call you up spontaneously. You're, sure thing. You're ready to go. I'm right? ready Whenever. To go. Magnus is always ready. All right. Magnus, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. See you again later. See you.